decided that um, this is really what I wanted to do. And as much as I love music, I kind of had to like put one of the things away, one of the creative expressions. And I did it about 10 years ago. And ever since then, I've kind of been able to finally really be in touch with what I want to do. Um, most, really, I actually brought a couple books for you guys to look at as well, because there's more, more to look at. Um, my biggest inspiration really growing up were the, the pulp magazines of the 30s and 40s. I mean, that's always been uh, something, even when, I don't know, my friends were reading like, you know, X-Men and Spider-Man, that kind of comic books, I was into something from a couple generations past. And so that's always something that's not only inspired me, but it was my idea to kind of take those artists and something that's kind of considered more seedy and try and make it something that's, it sounds kind of, <laughs> when I say make it fine art, because it sounds a little arrogant, because I don't, you know, but it's kind of giving, I just feel that a lot of illustrators weren't given a lot of respect. They weren't the fine artists. And I've kind of felt that the idea of taking those, you know, something that maybe was considered de classe or lowbrow and trying to elevate it a little bit. Uh, Hollywood Scandals. Uh, I had a series called Hollywood Eats Its Own. It's kind of similar. I don't know if you ever saw the Hollywood Babylon yes. series, Ken Fanger's book, and it was all kind of taking the idea of these, um, you know, it's kind of the darker side of Hollywood, but I was able to kind of put a little humor into it. So at least for me, I really consider what I do satire. I mean, although I'm an artist, I really, most of what I'm talking about is maybe some sort of social commentary. So these were um, from the Hollywood series. The latest thing that I'm doing is, um, it's called Bat Visions, and it's taking the Batman family, if you will, and trying to, I don't know, I, I kind of, Grew up, you know, liking Batman and the, and the TV series, but it kind of got really dark uh, with the movies around. And I really liked those films, but I kind of felt that it was got a little heavy, so I wanted to inject a little more humor into it. So the latest thing is taking um, a lot of advertising images, photographs from the 40s and 50s, and kind of turning them, kind of sort of maybe regular people into these superhero characters. Another thing that I've looked at is. Um, a lot of the early comic book covers had to do a lot with propaganda. And so, you know, things, that, obviously it was in the 40s, a lot of had to do with war, but I'm taking these original uh, covers and kind of doctoring them into a modern scenario. I don't have any of those pieces with me, unfortunately, but um, the original Wonder Woman cover, now she's, um, she's a Mexican-American who's uh, fighting the Tea Party. And the border patrol oh, where before okay. it was you know these yeah, yeah. gangsters that she was fighting i just also did a piece called ferguson and it was the first uh, superman cover where superman is black now and he's kind of fighting the, the police and so it's, it's the idea of taking these you know reinterpreting these these images and trying to make them say something in today's age. uh this is pride and again they're taking you know maybe like scenarios from you know, again, I'm using photographs from the 40s and 50s, trying to take it and tell a little different story. Um, for me, each one of these things, I kind of had to have a general subject matter that each kind of sin I felt what it what damage it did to society. I mean, so this one's a little bit, you know, it talks a little bit about the idea of segregation. Um, you know, I think it's, Pride is good when it's, you know, I think you can be proud about where you came from or, or, or what you do, but when it becomes, you know, you're superior to other people, then that's when it's, you know, a negative connotation. So we just have little things, you know, representing different images of, you know, the, the matriarch with allusions to the South here. Uh, the, the crow stands for, for Jim Crow. Is being fed to the to the children. Oh, I wonder what that was. Yeah. So within each one of these two, there's uh, a solitary figure that sort of represents the victim of of how these sins affect society. 
Uh, I did bring in that package over there, this is the book that shows, if you guys want to look at what the other sins look like, to give you a kind of perspective of. So they're all about these, you know, they're, there's all these different things associated with the sins from um, certain colors, animals. I really did a lot of research, even back, a lot of it has to do, I took a lot from Dante Alighieri because a lot of the things that he was talking about was really easy to transpose into the way he was commenting about society at the time. I thought it would be something to that I could use to comment about society today. And even though I'm using images from the 40s and 50s, hopefully people get the fact that I think there's something, at least for me, that kind of lulls you into this sense of, oh, everything's fine and calm and it's the perfect all-American family, but there's a lot happening below the surface.